So Harvey Weinstein is not doing well in sex rehab, apparently. Oh, no. no. He volunteered to go to rehab, and according to people, I guess, in the facility... Oh, no, this is, I, I thought he was going to do really well with this, and, and you're really ruining my day so far. One source says, in one group ser- therapy session, uh, Harvey arrived 15 minutes late. Then when it was his turn to speak, he launched into a speech about how this was all a conspiracy against him. Then he fell asleep in his chair. He woke up by the ringing of his smuggled mobile phone, which is banned at the facility. He was jolted awake, jumped up, took the call, and ran out of the room. Another source close to Weinstein says he is no longer joining group sessions for, quote, obvious reasons. He insists that he never raped or assaulted anyone, and all of the counters were consensual. He realized he acted like a a hole of some sort and insists that he's not a rapist. He does have his phone. When he's in therapy, he has to give it to someone else. The characterization of what he said what happened in the group session is not true. I don't believe it. So... I don't know if you saw the chauffeur. You know how you know how all these stories end where he was like the chauffeur will take you home. My driver will take you home. Get out. Get out. Get out, okay? Mhm. So this has come from his French chauffeur, the man who uh ferried Weinstein around when he was over in Cannes or in France. He said um Weinstein beat him when he took to meet a prostitute that didn't show up. The alleged beating put him out of commission for four days. He went crazy and hit me. At that moment, there was no question I would never work for him again. He did try to sue him for damages, but the local prosecutor in the town dismissed the charges. He said the women would enter the car with tears in their eyes. He said, I felt like driving poor innocent people, innocent girls, taking them to the wolf's mouth. I could not tell them where you put your feet. It's dangerous. He would... Uh, I guess, you know, he would meet people in his hotel room and he'd have these women driven to him. He said, the one that marked me the most was a girl who was a fan of him, who loved him, who followed him for years. She gave her body, her soul. She gave everything to this man because he promised to make castings and make a film that was never shot. He said he would demand that the driver would leave him alone with the woman And he said, I would often find traces of illicit products strung about. I don't know what that means. Drugs, maybe. Uh, The nickname among the locals in Cannes for Harvey became The Pig. One housekeeper at the Majestic Hotel where he stayed said, oh, him. Yeah, I love this. Oh, him. He was the ugly one who thought he was God. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's actually on his business card. He was very the ugly one who thinks <laughs> he's God. Uh, he was very bossy. Men like George Clooney or Brad Pitt, they were such lovely men and so handsome, but not him. He was just a mean pig. It's interesting. This is sort of the reverse of the Vegas shooting story. And that, like, with Vegas, it's like no one had any idea this guy was doing anything like this. There's no motive. There's no background. There's no trail. Nothing. This is, like, literally everyone who's ever met the guy thought he was doing something like this. They may not have known the extent. They may not have known he was committing crimes. But everyone seemed to know this guy was a complete dirtbag. And people like that didn't say anything i mean well if, quentin tarantino came out and said he knew a lot more than he said he sh- i should have said something yeah and he did you know he did a lot of movies with him i mean yeah. all, all of his work all of his big uh, movies yeah, all of his big stuff he said i knew enough to do more than i did there was more to it than just normal rumors the normal gossip it wasn't secondhand i knew he did a couple of these things um i wish i had taken responsibility for what i had heard if i had done the work i sh- uh, should have done then i would have uh, not worked with him anymore he was you know, dating Mira Sorvino yeah. after mm-hmm. Weinstein. Uh, and I guess Brad Pitt did know because Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt confronted him. So Brad Pitt did say something to Harvey Weinstein just for the Angelina stuff. Yeah. And Quentin said basically he was dating her and he knew Harvey wouldn't violate his his relationship. So he thought she was protected and he oh just my brushed gosh. it off. So a guy... Instead of going and stopping the other guy, he's just like, don't worry, you're under my umbrella now. That's bad. Yeah, uh, not, not good. it's not a good look. You know, I, I thought of this uh, last night. All these people who are now living with the shame, and they're going to convince themselves that they had nothing they could do. Because that's what happened. I mean, if you look at the Germans, the Germans that were involved and did nothing, 
you know, they all convinced themselves, ah, oh, there was nothing we could do. And maybe not, but they had to live a life of shame. And these people are living a life of shame. They're going to be tormented in their own head because they know. They know they didn't rise to the occasion. And so the question that we should all be asking ourselves now is, because I really believe tough times just aren't sprung on you. It's not like everything is great and then the next day it sucks and you're living under Hitler. It happens slowly and you have opportunities to stop that slide all the way along. But society, you know, it's in our Declaration of Independence. People are more likely to live with tyrants than they are to upset the apple cart. Now, that's obviously butchering the Declaration of Independence, but you're just more you're more likely to just go along with it. <laughs> there wasn't an apple cart reference no, in the Declaration of Independence. Are no, you sure about no, that? No, apple carts. They're racist. So, I mean, it's human nature to just go along and let it slide. And if you don't prepare yourself to stand up in the easy times, now he might have thought that was really hard, but now he's looking at that and going, geez, that was easy. I should have done that. Don't put yourself in a position to where you're ever having to say, I should have done X, Y, or Z. Do it. Don't live with the regret. And it's a muscle. Courage is a muscle. If you're not exercising it in the smallest of ways, telling your kid what you should be telling your kid, telling your spouse what you should be telling your spouse, Saying something to somebody that is important, that is hard for them to hear, but you should say it. If you aren't exercising that m muscle of courage at the smallest, most personal level, you will never be able to stand when it really counts. So Harvey Weinstein.